The man problem. Let's find out what the problem of the man is. Except existing, because uh, yeah, we all know we all know from certain videos that that's a problem. And for those of you that aren't able to tell, I was sarcastic. I think it's dumb to have a problem with an entire gender existing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And happy one year anniversary to my male loneliness epidemic video. I'm happy to announce that since that video Yo. uploaded, the discourse has greatly improved. People Lovely. all around the world are taking men's issues more seriously, and the gender war has finally come to an end. Um, I want some of what she's sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of copium. Just kidding. Everything has gotten worse and nobody uh -huh. has learned anything. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like, that, that, that. Sure, sure, you have a great poker face, but I'm, I'm like, your lips are moving and we all know it's fake. <laughs> From the witches on The View cackling about how men are useless. Do we need men? Yes. <laughs> men are useless. <laughs> I mean... To women online saying they'd rather- You know the- Okay, like, you know the weirdest part of women saying men are useless? You fucking birthed them and raised them. I I'm just like, uh, uh hello, lady? You you're literally saying that women are incapable of raising men at that point. I'm just like, <laughs> make it make sense. To be stranded in the woods with a bear than a man. Would you rather be stuck oh, in a forest? I hate with a this man one so much. Uh, the bear. 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 It's Dude, I hope that they see a real life bear <laughs> in close range so they understand exactly what they're saying. Like, I hated that trend so much. I saw it so much on TikTok, and every time I just rolled my eyes and I like, scrolled up. I didn't even stop to listen. I was just like, I saw the headline of like, would you rather? And I'm like, nope, this is another bear video. I don't, I don't wanna. I don't wanna engage in that. That's like, no. Seems that things have gotten more toxic than ever, and the gender divide couldn't be any wider, especially politically. In 2008, 58% of young people leaned Democratic. 2012, 53%. And in the last two major election years, that percentage held steady at 55%. But okay. in 2023, that number dipped below 50% for the first time since 2005. And you'll notice right here, they've started to lean more Republican. And that's partly because of one specific group, young men. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, I know I said I was going to focus on the gender war and not talk about politics for a while. However, I found a loophole. <laughs> politics is talking about gender war. <laughs> I found the loophole! Oh, shoot. Never change. Oh, they've never seen real woods. Exactly. That's my point as well. Right. As someone that like I live in a country with a fuck ton of bears. We have so many bears. No one in their right mind is going to pick a bear. With this election being hailed by the media as the man vs. woman election, according to any and all data coming out recently, men all around the world have shifted more right and women have shifted more left. But Holy. Gee. That is a pretty damn huge shift. My political stance is I don't trust any politician no matter what side of the fence they're on. Yeah, I mean, pick the lesser evil. That's literally the game nowadays. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at South Korea. It's absolutely insane. Like, the divide in South Korea is, like, crazy. It's almost like a majority of people just got tired of the shit going on. It's a wild take. Uh-huh. I mean, no shit, Sherlock, at that point. You try and be supportive and understanding and people just shit on you. And they don't want equality. They just want to replace you and make you feel like crap. So it's like, wow, I wonder why people are suddenly done with it. It's not wild as common sense, but the common sense is this rare. Mm -hmm. But women going more left was not the focus of this month's outrage. The outrage, of course, was about men. That's right, we got our yearly, oh no, what is happening to men? Why are they moving to the right? Freak out. But unlike last year, this freak out isn't solely happening on the internet, no. It's also happening in Washington, D.C. There are only 46 days until election day, and the harris Walls campaign is struggling to appeal to a group of voters that could determine the outcome of the election, and that is men. 
The Harris campaign is making an aggressive last minute effort to win over younger male voters. Am I really going to make a video criticizing the Democrat Party days before the election? <laughs> Of course I am. But before you celebrate or grab your pitchforks, this is not a pro-Trump video. This is a oh. do better video. This is a mommy's not mad, she's disappointed video. <laughs> mommy's not mad, just disappointed. Oh, I mean, when your strategy is just saying your opponent's worse and people should have common sense and use their brains, you're, you're not really gonna do well. Actually, I lied. Mommy's pretty mad. In this video, <laughs> I'm going to be addressing the Democrats' so-called man problem, the recent discourse about men moving right, the last-minute pandering the Democratic Party is doing to get them back, what they could be doing instead, and of course, going over some terrible opinions. Not my opinions. I have never had a bad opinion in my life. <laughs> Except that one opinion. We don't talk about that one opinion. <laughs> in a world where it seems like everything men do and like is toxic, from eating meat to working out to even mm -hmm. having a beard. Oh wait, that reminds me. Before Seriously? we get into this video, let's quickly give a shout out to today's video what? sponsor, Henson Shaving. Seriously, if, if you have a beard, a you're sexist. Razor, you're probably familiar with this Oh, I like story. this outfit. Irritation, this hair razor burns, mean. and maybe even ingrown hair. Studies show two thirds of men experience some form of irritation after shaving. It's something they just expect at this point. They deal with overpriced blades, that is kind of sad that you skin, expect and it. think that's just the way it has to be. Until now. Henson Shaving is on a mission to improve shaving with real innovation and a focus on your skin's health. Their razors are made with solid aluminum, making them not only durable, but environmentally friendly too. There's no plastic involved at all, even in the packaging. And the blades okay. are fully recyclable. What really sets Henson apart is their engineering, with their Henson AL-13 safety razor being manufactured in an aerospace machine shop that built parts for the International Space Station. This precision allows the blade to extend just a thousandth of an inch beyond the shave plane, less than the thickness of a human hair. The razor prevents any bouncing huh. or skipping, resulting in an irritation-free shave every time. Henson even partnered with a medical imaging startup, and results indicated that the Henson AL-13 razor significantly reduces razor burn in comparison to conventional multi-blade razors. Since I switched to using Henson as my go-to razor brand, my shaves have been more silky and smoother than ever. No more burns or cuts, just a close shave that feels amazing. I wax, in other so words, like, it's no more like for a beard. Me. The best part is, once you invest in a like Henson beard. razor, it's a lifetime purchase. The only thing you need to repurchase are the blades, which only cost 10 cents each. 10 cents? 10 cents. So once you own a that Henson razor, way you'll cheaper. only be spending Holy $3 to $5 a year on blades, compared to the ongoing cost of buying those expensive plastic cartridges. Henson store offers a variety of colors, That's so you can cool. pick the razor that best fits your style. So head over to hensonshaving.com slash shoe and use my special discount shoe at checkout to get a hundred blades for free. <laughs> Let me guess, the razor's a hundred. Razor. Your skin Probably and your is. environment will thank you. Big thank you to Henson <laughs> for sponsoring this video and thank you for not skipping the ad. You didn't skip the ad, right? And now let's get back we to the We didn't skip the ad. I never skip your you ads. Are a I actually never skip any ads, but... <laughs> How much to the dismay of everyone watching? They're like, Pause, I don't want to watch the ad! And I'm like, it's the creator's livelihood. You better watch that ad. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're good. They already got the money, whether you watch it or not, don't give them more money. Mm, they do get more money by the simple fact that, like, you might purchase the item with their code. So, you never know. Maybe you don't need it, but maybe someone that's watching the video goes like, oh, you know. That's kind of interesting. And they might end up purchasing it with their code. Yeah, I know a lot of people skip ads. Like, I don't mind it if it's sponsorship stuff. Because, like, sometimes it matters in their statistics as well. Like, how many people actually watched it. It's very rare. But at the end of the day, they get, they get paid more by referring people as well. Mm. Alright, back to the video. Regular viewer to the Shoe on Head channel. First of all, I'm sorry. But also, you know by now, I have been documenting the internet and society in general's growing and widely accepted hatred of men. This has been happening for a very long time. And if you dare spoke up about it, you were called an incel or a pick me, depending on your gender. But seemingly, almost out of nowhere, Dude. there has been a change of heart. <laughs> it's funny because I was never called a pick me, but 
uh, I have heard of people being called pick me for like siding with men. Here, like, I don't know, maybe it's where I grew up, but like, we never really had that where it was instilled in us that men are useless. If anything, men have always been useful in everything. Like, it, it's so very weird, right? Like, I grew up thinking my dad is the most knowledgeable person in the world and that I, my dad can do everything. That's how I grew up. I was like, my dad is the hero. <laughs> he can do everything. And uh, then I had my uncle who was good at like chess and engineering. And then I had my grandfather who, who was able to like, you know, provide and grow life on, like grow crops, grow life from the ground. Right. And I was like, whoa. So I grew up very much with men around me that were very capable. Uh, where's the uncle that decapitated the pig? Oh, I was part of that one too, Jin. <laughs> I, I told my dad I never want to be part of the um, pig killing process for Christmas. I, 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 I'm not a person that looks at blood and is squeamish, right? I'm not a person that looks at gore and is like, ooh, ah, uh, ee. But it was, it broke my heart. Like, it broke my heart in the sense that I felt bad for the poor pig. So I was like, never again. <laughs> never again. But yeah, that all, all the people, like, that were doing the killing, right? They were all men. Um, and all the women were on the traditional side in the kitchen preparing, like, butchering the pig afterwards so like they all had the job and a role and something to do and a reason for existing right that's just how i grew up and it wasn't that oh i'm a girl so i need to be in the kitchen no they showed me both sides and they were like what do you want to do if you even want to do like they didn't even force me to do anything right but it was like what do you want to do so yeah like, my dad taught me how to separate laundry, how to, like, do my laundry, how to, like, make sure, like, to pick fabric and stuff like that. I'm just like, bruh, <laughs> if I have any question, the first person that comes to mind, it's not my fucking phone. It's not ChatGPT or Google. It's calling my dad. I still go like, oh, hi, dad. <laughs> uh, so I, I have a question. Obviously, not for simple things that, you know, anyone can just Google in two seconds. But, like, yeah. I don't know. I love my dad. <laughs> so that's why it's weird to me, right? Hearing people go like, men are useless. I'm just like, no, they're not. I don't know what kind of men you have around you, but like, holy shit, they do so much here. You know, I think men are in crisis, actually, in this country. Uh, I think that plays out different ways, but I think we need to have a real conversation about that. Wow, that's interesting. Mainstream media talking about this. <laughs> I wonder why they care so much now. Democrats fear Harris losing too many male voters to Trump. <laughs> oh. Signs have been mounting that, for the first time in recent decades, Democrats may lose majority support from young men in 2024. The risk to Democrats is that this is not just a one-time fluke, but an indication of growing trouble with men in coming elections. Democrats can celebrate the support they are getting from young women, but they also need to take the disaffection of young men seriously, engage them directly, and respond to the visions of manhood and masculinity that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are offering. All right, Kamala, you got two weeks to reverse anti-male <laughs> propaganda and resentment fueled by our government, media, and institutions. How are you gonna do it? Harris campaign creating space for white dudes. <laughs> what is that racist title, man? <laughs> what is going on in America? Oh, that's a great idea. I mean, a little too late, but I'm glad you're finally doing oh. to be honest about role in history. Oh. It's always a space for white men to talk Hello? about how much they suck. What made you Whoa. start this group, White Dudes for Harris? And I suspect some of it has to do with the, the polling. Yeah, for far too long, the left has essentially ceded white men to the MAGA okay. right. There's large parts of the left who have uh, gone out of their way to alienate white men over the last couple of years. And there, that's understandable in many ways. We decided that we wanted to- the, This is literally on your media? What does the skin color have to do with anything? I'm just like, America, are you okay? You're literally being- <laughs> You're being hopeless. I, I 
it just what the fuck it creates space for white men uh, to be a part of electing uh, Vice President Harris. At the top of the call, White Dudes for Harris organizer Ross Morales Rocchito said he wanted to address what he called the elephant in the room, criticism surrounding an event organized for white men given the country's history of racism. Seriously? <laughs> he wanted to address it? Wow. Um, yeah, you could have left the racism out of it. A lot of people felt uncomfortable about the call, he said. Throughout American history, when white men organized, it was often with pointy hats on. They can't oh, even have their gay little boy. Zoom call where they circle jerk about hating themselves without their own movement going, yikes! <laughs> A bunch of white males in one space? Seems kind of like the KKK. Black people can have their little groups and that's fine, but if a bunch of white people get together, well... Well, that's just called bread tube. <laughs> Never mind. White dudes for Harris. <laughs> I mean, she's doing pretty bad with Latinos, too. What's next? Hombres con Harris? <laughs> I do have- You guys know the meme with, like, that one person being surrounded by, like, five dudes? Like, that one person on the couch and five dudes b behind. That's what I'm imagining. White men for Harris. And you just have Harris and a bunch of men around her. And I'm just like... Oh, yeah. Someone tell me that you memed it. Someone tell me that, that that's a meme. It has to be. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I missed that because I was laughing. Ombres con Harris. Seriously? How incredibly racist is the. How incredibly fucked up is the. How. Why do you have targeted ads? Like, sure, you have targeted ads put for specific demographics. That's nothing new, but like, making it your public uh, campaign talk. I'm just like, are you guys. Why are you openly racist? Why the what what is wrong with america i just like i don't understand it man i just like can't we just leave race and skin color out of it why can't you just be normal and make a call for everyone of all ethnicities of all skin colors of all the people in your country is that too hard oh so basically, men are leaving the Democratic Party in droves, and it's not looking too good for the Democrats. So it wasn't long until everyone's favorite discourse hit Twitter again. If Kamala loses, which is very possible, there needs to be a real discussion about how Democrats speak to and reach young men. If Kamala loses. If. If she wins, mm. there doesn't have to be discussion. We shouldn't change anything. Clearly, we're doing everything right. To be clear, yep. I'm not saying we need to worry about women less or change any positions. I'm saying the polling around young men is concerning. And if it turns out to be true, we need to have a discussion about how condescending <laughs> we are coming off to a huge part of the electorate. We need to have a discussion about how condescending we are. I'm just like, hmm, yeah. To be clear, Aww. I'm not saying we have to change anything. I'm just wondering why men aren't voting for us. What? I am gonna regret posting this so hard. And oh boy, did he. The replies <laughs> were insane, to say the least. I must admit, I cringed reading most of this. I feel that one thing you didn't address is the systemic entitlement bestowed upon uh. white men in the US. That uh, sense of entitlement, yeah. that privilege they felt for eternity, is eroding. Systemic entitlement they have felt for uh, eternity? Ah, yes. Yes, yes. Just like... Well, we're changing that now. How does it feel? How does it feel to be in our shoes? I'm like... Oh, yes. What happened to equality? It's just literally proving that they just want to control and be better and be superior. I'm just like... That is such a disgusting tweet. They're like 22 years old. The f do you mean eternity? Who is this like 
200-year-old man. So young men are snowflakes <laughs> with hurt fifis because they're not the center of attention anymore. Got it. So are they poor little snowflakes, boo-hoo, or are they scary fascists that are gonna turn America into the Handmaid's Tale? Because they can't be both. You either care about the future or you don't. You cannot simultaneously hand wave away men moving to fascism, but also fear monger about it. Hi, man <laughs> here. Maybe men just need to stop being absolute pieces of dog shit. It seems like the easiest thing to do. Ah, uh, yes. Hi, man here. Uh, I've been brainwashed to to think that if I side with the women, they're gonna give me a minute of their time and I might get of a JJ. Hi. Hi. I might get lame if I speak that. What a pick me. <laughs> I don't know what a male equivalent of pick me is, but like. <laughs> what a pick me, man. Who's this dude speaking for? Um, for himself, he's looking in the mirror and practicing. Okay. Right? I don't feel alienated or uncomfortable with democratic messaging because I'm not a complete wannabe fascist cheese dick incel loser who thinks he's the good guy. <laughs> Reddit and its consequences have been a disaster for the male race. They just need to get off their asses, stop playing video games, and get real jobs. Hi, man here, can we stop using 5% of the world's population called the US as universal referral? No. <laughs> stop playing video games. And I, here I was just about to play some video games later. Oh. First of all, first of all, what real jobs? These guys are coming out of college with useless diplomas and there are no jobs. Also, what an out of touch boomer ass take. Get off your ass and stop playing those video games from the generation <laughs> who watches TV 24 seven. I don't want to hear it. Tell them to get therapy. Tell them whatever you told or gave to women in the 1950s. They made this bed, let them sleep alone in it. Or be f***ing better men. Any other group of people wow. and it's, oh boo hoo, poor baby. Let me rewire all of society so your feelings aren't hurt. And then with men it's get therapy. Be f***ing better. While there is truth in messaging yeah. needs to be better from Democrats as a whole, I reject that telling <laughs> young men they need to be better is the problem. They are trash in their nature, and if they can't do the work to not be toxic waste of seed, <laughs> oh that's god. on them. Oh my god, man! Dude, these people must be trolls! They have to be trolls! Like, how do you go ahead and you just call every young man in the world trash? And like, um, again, excuse me, but like, these men were raised by you. And your generation. They were raised by people, educated by people. If they turned out to be trash, don't you think that's a system problem? Don't you think that's a previous generation problem? It's like, wow. Wow. It's wild. It's honestly wild to see that people are like that or actually believe this. Like, dude. Vote for my team, by the way. We may not want to hear it, but this is what the data reflects. There is a massive loneliness epidemic in this country, which is disproportionately affecting men. Instead of calling them incels or mocking them, we should be willing to hear out their concerns. Oh boy, wow, that person got roasted. a good tweet in a sea of bullshit. That's nice to see. I could be wrong, but I'm assuming you're a straight white man. So yeah, <laughs> go do something about it. Why are you guys bothering the rest of us with this? I can't figure it out. Oh my god, dude. How can you be such an insensitive ass? You're like, oh, we should be open, inclusive, listen to people. Uh, people are depressed and lonely. It's like, do something about it. Oh, it's a guy? Oh, it's a, it's a white man? A straight white man? Oof, never mind. I'm like, being straight is an issue. Mm -hmm. If you're straight and you're white and you're a man, you, uh, you might as well move country, apparently. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I can't, like, I cannot fathom what anonymity does to these people. Like, honestly, clown world, yeah. Imagine just posting shit like this. Like, who are you, what are you doing? What are you doing to better the world? You're being a keyboard warrior online, spewing toxicity making people feel bad, making people believe this rhetoric, and being a dick. 
Like you are the actual problem. Public lynch? Hey, let's not go as far as lynching them. Just store some freaking sense into the world. <sighs> These people need to like realize the impact that they're having. Be forced to be in front of like 50 young adults that are all looking at him or her. Just look those people in the eye and say the sentence. I dare you, they won't be able to. I dare you, they'll fucking piss their pants and they'll be afraid. They'll be afraid of actual consequence. Because I would like for Democrats to win the election. Why do you care about men suffering? Because I want to win the election. Amazing. This is the issue right here. Start seeing men as people and not numbers in polls. That is step one. You can't even do step one. Anyway, there were thousands nope, of these kind of tweets in response to this guy. You get it. We've seen it all before. If I went through all of them, this video would be three hours long. White Dudes for Harris wasn't the only Very strange sad. attempt the Democrats threw out at the last second to get the male vote. Hey, white dudes. Yeah, bring shame back. Like, I feel like people just are shameless. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm weird, but like, I don't post stuff that I don't believe in and I wouldn't be comfortable saying them face to face to someone. I'm I'm not going to go there and be like extreme just because it brings me more. Not to mention Twitter in itself is fucked up, okay? It is honestly super fucked up because there is an incentive to be controversial, but not too controversial. Just shitting on men won't generate community notes, right? So you can shit on men all you want and you make ad revenue. There are people that have accounts that all they do is shit on men and they get thousands of dollars from ad revenue because they have the blue check mark and because people engage with it, be it against or be it with. So they profit off of it. It's worthwhile. And you can't community note it to like get rid of the revenue. So it's literally a cesspool. That platform is meant to be antagonizing, to make you fight, to make you see things that will piss you off and trigger you. Like it is so bad. So I think we're all pretty sick of hearing how much we suck. Every time you go online, it's the same story. We're the problem. And yeah, some white dudes are. Trump and all his MAGA buddies are out there making it worse. Are you f***ing kidding me? <laughs> Years of these people saying men suck and are the problem, and now they're like, Hey fellow men, are you sick of being told you suck and are the problem? The audacity. <laughs> Apparently Kamala Harris has a secret weapon to win over male voters. Kamala Harris is turning to her running mate, Tim Walls, hoping he is the secret oh, weapon who God. can chip away at Donald Trump's support from men. Much like how Trump chose Pence to win over- uh, Yes, I do I do love a good political uh, point at the opponent and say, he's so much worse than me. <laughs> uh, to be more establishment Republican voters, Kamala seems to have chosen Tim Walls to try and win over the white male vote. And boy, are they trying. Now, I don't hate Tim Walls. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised when they chose him over Josh Shapiro. I like a lot of his policies, like his universal school lunch policy. That's an amazing policy. You'd have to be an insane freak to disagree with that or a libertarian. But I repeat myself. And there are a few times- Yeah, like, as someone on the outside, right, I do find American politics to be comedic. It is sad, but it is also kind of funny. It's just like, wow. <laughs> but it is sad. It's funny, but it's funny sad. It's one of those things where like, you look at it and you're like, how do people not see what's happening? And then you realize, well, they have to fight all sorts of diversion stuff that's being thrown at them, including apparently racist campaigns. I'm just like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Times where he was speaking where I completely forgot he was running to be Kamala's VP and not president himself. And he actually brought a lot of energy to the Democratic stage for once. So what the f was this? Putting out a bunch of ads of Tim Walls changing the air filter in a car, clumsily shooting a gun, and drawing a political football play-by-play. -play. Trotting out Walls like some kind of minstrel show of a white man. Like a man dressing up like a man for Halloween. You don't gotta do all this, bro, I promise you. And they don't shy away about how that's exactly what they are trying to do. Tim Walls is clearly a Midwest uh... man's man, but he's the antidote to toxic MAGA masculinity. Despite his typically masculine okay. resume as a Midwestern football coach and veteran, Walls is utilizing those qualities to push forward a more progressive, compassion-based form of masculinity. I yes. How do you manage in your campaign to want to make men be on your side to still somehow blame them? Like, huh? How? Just how? How? How do you? How do 
you end up as a marketing team and go like, yes, uh, see this guy? He's the perfect example of what a man is. Doing manly things. Um, but he's pushing for less masculinity, more compassion. I'm like, um, uh, okay. Part of being a vice president is understanding that you are just that, someone who is there to aid and support the president. Walls simply being there on the ticket with a woman and taking a back seat to his running mate, Vice President Kamala Harris, is him embracing his leadership role in a positive, masculine way. Seriously? That, that makes me want to barf. <laughs> that makes me want to barf. I'm like, Walls being there with a woman, you know, we gotta insert the with a woman over there. And saying, I, I'll take the back seat and make sure to step up in case the woman fucks up. <laughs> Was this article written by AI? It feels like that. Oh. I'm just like, wow. Good job. Yeah, he's gonna waltz in. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh. The bicameral system in America forces you into not voting or voting for the person who pisses you off the least. Yeah, that's why I said, like, it's literally, you get to pick between who's the lesser evil. Who does less damage in your opinion? It's just one of those are like, what the fudge, man? What, what is this? It sucks. Football coach and cheerleader. How Tim Walls is defining masculinity. Amy Deal, a sexism oh. researcher and author of the 2023 book Glass Walls, told USA Today that men uh. like Walls who are intentional about rejecting traits and beliefs commonly dubbed as toxic masculinity. Men like Walls who are intentional about rejecting traits. All the while, while he's a football coach, changes the oil in a car and acts as a father figure, which is like um, all pretty male traits. By any consideration, I see. I I'm like, he's just doing normal shit, man, and just living his life, and you're just going like, and you see how positive he is? That's literally like you're saying he's toxic while also saying he's not toxic and he's embracing a, a vice president uh, role. He's like, oh, yes, I'm the safety net. That's fucked up are the tonic to harmful stigma associated with reading does makes me want to boys or he shows you can be eyes. masculine but also not threatened by women as equals or women who are in positions of power in fact you can be cheerleaders for them <laughs> oh boy no one told them that that's just real life that this whole being threatened by women fiction that people keep shoving down people's throats is a, that is really what's happening um is a made up bullshit man <laughs> and the fact that like oh you can be cheerleaders for them you mean every good husband for their wife yeah sure there are some bad husbands out there and some bad wives and there are people that you don't want to cheer them on because they're shitty people. It doesn't matter that their gender is fucking feminine. It doesn't matter what their gender is. If you're a shitty person, you're not going to get it cheered on. If you're a good person, people are going to cheer you on. Like, what the actual heck is this? I'm just like, what is this article? It's baffling. It's pissing me off. It's like, dude, America, you need to to leave America and see how the rest of the world is. Maybe that will open some eyes to some people that this is made up bullshit propaganda. Ugh. Cult personalities disagree. Ugh. Notice the common theme here, taking a back seat, cheerleading. Like five different articles I read specifically use this word cheerleading. Even a few about Kamala Harris's husband, Doug. God knows we need an antidote for all the lousy men in the news, and I think I found one. A lovable oh, goofball lovely. who is happy to cheerlead for his wife, the vice president of the US. Uh. <laughs> you mean every fucking husband? <laughs> 
Thank God for Doug Emhoff. Successful guys can support their wives and be respected. You don't have to be the quarterback to play the game at an elite level. Emhoff and his breed of dudes who are giving it their best shot may never be as come hither to lost young men as the militant Andrew Tate models of manhood, but they are out there <laughs> and, not unlike good husbands, will appear when they are needed. Instead of learning what Andrew Tate did to garner such a massive following and literally be able to like play men and young people on a fiddle instead of learning from that all you do is you bash men <laughs> you bash them and you bash masculinity and what you think is good masculinity versus bad masculinity versus what's considered supportive masculinity or toxic masculinity <laughs> I'm like bruh these people clearly they're throwing their beliefs down people's throat and going like, why aren't you chugging it down? I'm giving you like the best. And you're like, this is slop. I don't want it. From the outside looking in, the right promises young men a return to the good times of the glorious past. You know, the one your grandfather had. The Coca-Cola ad rose-tinted version of the past. Back when you can afford a house and support a family on one income. While the left, which historically, in my opinion, had the policies to You can still do that. Just not in the US. To make that happen, are instead trying to sell men a vision of the future. And well, the future is female. A future where you're no longer no, playing the is. game, men. You're on the sidelines being a cheerleader. Doesn't that just sound so exciting? Like, what the hell is going on inside these DNC consultant meetings? I, I mean, there are plenty of men that would be happy to freaking be house husbands. Like, <laughs> I know so many that would be happy to quote unquote cheerlead, aka stay at home. And I'm just like, I don't think they need to be told that. They choose that. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to choice? What happened to people simply deciding for themselves? What happened to just letting people exist? I really gotta know. <clears throat> Does anyone have any ideas on how to appeal to young men? And please, for the love of God, do not say we have to offer them anything or change in any way. I got it. What? Camo hats. We did that. Vasectomy bus. <laughs> we did that. Have what? You perhaps try it. You offered. You offered them a free vasectomy? Are you for real? How? Why the fudge would a free vasectomy get you a vote? I'm just like. What? <laughs> vote for me, I'll snip your balls. Yeah, vote for me so that you might not even be able to have children uh, in the future. Because obviously I'm not going to properly tell you the risks of, of it either. Vote for me so you can please your lady more without the risk of a brat. Save on condoms. <laughs> oh. 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 This is so sad and pathetic. And nagging them. Yes, yes, we've been doing that. Say, you know that whole male loneliness epidemic thing? Hmm, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh yeah. It's a really nice place. Have you been here before? Yeah, it's one of my favorite spots. I bring everybody here. I say now I go on a lot of dates, but... Seriously? Japan and hired them for ads because Japan at least has good ads. <laughs> oh my god, oh my, I can't, I can't. Like, how do you just try and convince someone? Like, okay, first of all, you want to appeal to the Latinos and you want to appeal to the white men, and um. The ad campaign, ladies and gentlemen, the ad campaign 
I, I don't even think what they're appearing, appearing, appealing to anymore. <laughs> Ice the Wolf King. F*** you. Brilliant. <sighs> Young men should know that if you vote for Trump, you're basically never going to get laid. <laughs> I mean, is it incorrect? Don't think so. Trump gives girls the ick. Vote Harris, get laid. What? Oh, man. Oh, man. You gotta think that they really look at men as these dumb idiots that are just horny and incapable of thought that this level of a campaign would work. I I'm just like... How low do you think of men? How do you even think that? Well, they probably don't think. Who the heck hires these marketing teams? Uh, they are not feeding the pretending to be progressive to get laid allegations with this one. Literally just endorsing woke fishing. <laughs> when men pretend to be more progressive on dating woke apps fished. to get laid. Do not do this, by the way. Be open and honest about your opinions. And no, you cannot fix them. <laughs> also, pretty weird and like low-key sexist to imply like women are some prize for voting the correct way. Hey, and if all else fails, go after the gooner vote. Oh, oh, are oh. you kidding me? Sorry, you can't do that. What the hell, man? How'd you get in here? I'm your Republican congressman. <laughs> now that we're in charge, we're banning porn <laughs> nationwide. <laughs> I f***ing- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love this ad. The one time they speak to men directly, and it's- Hey men, the Republicans are gonna take away one of the only vices you use to numb the pain. Oh. So vote for us. Bleep. Dude, I are you for real? First, they give you a vasectomy so you can get laid without risk of uh, children. Then they tell you that if you don't vote, you don't get the date. And then they tell you that if you vote wrong, your porn's going away. Yeah, they really... They really do think men are dumb. <laughs> oh. Yeah, these are real ads. Speak. Just the absolute state of the world right now. Also, was that Germa? Believe it or not, this wasn't the worst of it. I'm a Seriously? Vote save America. Oh, God. Man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof <laughs> bourbon. Meat. I'm man enough to cook my steak rare. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat, car <laughs> I eat carburetors for breakfast. <laughs> I'm like, dude, half, half the people that, half the young people are, don't want even one don't even know what a carburetor is. Carburetors for breakfast. I'll tell you another thing I sure as shit am not afraid of. Women. When I first saw that- <laughs> Ah yes, congrats. So you basically told every person that potentially, I don't know, um, reached adulthood during COVID times where they didn't have any interaction with anyone and they had to study at home, now that they're afraid to interact with people in general, that they're pussies and wusses and not men. They're not men because they might be afraid to talk to people. Yes. And they might be afraid of, you know, false allegations for simply approaching someone or getting thrown in jail or being baited or being catfished. Yes, yes. Uh, insult them. That that's gonna get their vote. Just insult them. <sighs> yeah. Well, as I thought it was a parody created by Republicans to make fun of how hard the Democratic Party is trying to pander to men to get their vote. But alas. I love women. I love women who support <laughs> their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. <laughs> I love women who decide not to have families. Then why are you in the picture? What what do you do? Are you a fuckboy? Is that your thing? You just like go in, have a quickie, and then you love women that don't want families for what reason exactly? Well like what what's your role there? I don't understand that. <laughs> He's outside the window. <laughs> oh freaking 
watching fetish. Oh. <laughs> I like women who take charge. Congrats, man. You're a sub. Um, thank you for sharing something about you that should be kept in the bedroom. But thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. That definitely makes me want to go vote. And I'm man enough to help them win. I'm man enough to help them win. Really? Really? How exactly? With the hay bale? Are, are you gonna help them win with a hay bale? Or uh, sitting on your ass? I'm just like, which part of it? How are you helping them? <laughs> with words? Oh, man. <sighs> Dude, when will people understand that you... First of all, these ads are dumb. And second of all, if you want to help someone, you show it. You don't say it. Freaking actions speak louder than words. Always. Forever. There, There's not a single woman in this video. Not a single fucking woman. You would have a much better time just having two co-workers being filmed and say that they weren't sexually harassed. Either of them. They have great chemistry. They rotate who closes at night and they make sure that if someone's bullying someone, the other has their back. You have a way better time convincing someone than putting this show. Win. Everything Jesus from them Christ, directed man. towards men has to have like this tone of irony or self-deprecation. They can't even do it sincerely. <laughs> but apparently white men aren't the only demographic Kamala is struggling with. This is the democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton oh, no only shit, won Sherlock. by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden, last time around yeah. by 53. <laughs> tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. Democrats deployed their ultimate weapon. Barack Obama. At a campaign stump for oh, Harris nice. on Thursday in Pittsburgh, Obama said that despite Harris raising upward of $1 billion, we have yet to see the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. That lag in energy, he added, appears, quote, to be more pronounced with the brothers. Oh, yay. You're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that, he said, because part of it makes me think, <coughs> and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman uh, yes. for president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You're, you guys are sexist because you're not voting for the woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault again. Yeah, that will, that will win people over. Congratulations. Nice. Absolutely amazing. Makes sense. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I can't, man. I can't. Like, ah. Uh... Once again, their only tactic seems to be getting in a man's face and going tisk tisk bad boy, like a dog that just peed on the carpet. It's not 2014 anymore, Brock. Nobody cares about sexism, motherfucker. We can't afford groceries. <laughs> exactly what she said. I'm just, bruh. Get off your sexist train. Stop telling people that they're sexist. Instead of listening to the reasons that they're giving, you're dismissing the reason. You're gaslighting them and you're saying, nah, you're just making excuses. I know the truth. I am better than you and I know. Way to shit on the people that supported you. Like, Jesus Christ. What's crazy is, as far as I know, Kamala herself has never played the woman card. She has never played the sexism card. In fact, she actively pushes against it. You've been reluctant to lean into, to talk about the historic nature of your candidacy on the campaign trail. Why is that? Oh, well, I'm clearly a woman. <laughs> I don't need to point that out to anyone. Uh, yeah. The, the point that most people really care about is, can you do the job? And yeah. do you have a plan to yeah. actually focus on them? I was <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, no one cares that I'm a woman. <laughs> it's like, everyone will care if I can do the fucking job. It's like, why would she play the card? It's like, there's no point in that. You're not going to win points. If anything, you're going to alienate even more people. Because why the heck should I vote just because you have a vagina? Proud. It's like they finally learned from Hillary Clinton's failure. But that didn't stop the media or fuck Barack Obama from doing it for her. Thanks, Obama. Uh, for all the Zoomers, thanks, Obama was a meme. 
in like yeah it would be damaging for her um, obviously like, obviously she would play it if it wouldn't be damaging for her but it would be damaging for her like i was told um like as a completely separate segment to the entire video i was told when i com when i was playing diablo 4 and i reached level 100 I was told that I should say that I'm the first woman level 100 and I'm the first VTuber level 100. <laughs> you know, claim, claim the glory, right? It's like, okay, but I wasn't, I wasn't first. Why? Because it's optics and people care about that. Because it's rare that a woman uh, races and doesn't sleep and games more. <laughs> Obviously, I don't do it because, like, I felt cringe. I felt so cringe about that. I was like, I'm good. Yeah, it was funny back then. That would have, that would that would have slapped. <laughs> While I was writing this video, Kamala and Gretchen Whitmore were getting ready to film a video at a bar together when Kamala was apparently caught on hot mic saying this. Yeah. Oh, we have microphones and oh, I'm listening to everything. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, uh, well, you'll bleep you my F words. We just told all the family secrets. <laughs> Shit. We need to move ground with okay. men. So what we're gonna do is pretend to drink beer out of bar. Men like beer, right? Cheers. 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 Just talk about policy just be yourself just listen to men and what they want it would have been better if she actually spoke with a man at the bar while having a drink but then people would think she's unfaithful and cheating <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if she's married but or that she's just having uh the time of her life right not taking the candidacy seriously so like no matter how you do it you can't fucking win <laughs> Oh man, but what, what is this optics of like, I'm one of you? You're not, you're literally running to be the president. Like, you're not one of the common folk. You can change their life. You can do better for people. You can do great things. Instead, no, just tell them to get laid more and drink a beer at a pub. That clearly will tell people why they should vote for you. Marketing, man. I hate it. Kamala, all you gotta do is talk. Actually, no. Now that I think about it, that might make it worse. Put Tim Walls out there, okay? Let Tim Walls do the talking. Don't dress him up as a man. <laughs> you wanna know how to speak to men? Go to where they are. A good place to speak to young men is the Joe Rogan podcast, which Kamala hinted at going on, but then that never happened, and instead, Trump went on, and that episode hit like 20 million views in a day. But like... Can you blame her? Joe Rogan is just one of the most popular podcasts in the world with a majority young male audience. I hate it here. Every time this topic comes up, so does the- But you can't go to the young male audience and, you know, actually talk to them. No, that's too direct. Topic of like Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, internet algorithms, Gamergate, whatever. There is a massive amount of right-wing radicalization that has been occurring, especially in younger male anymore. spaces. Any hobbies whatsoever, whether it's playing video games, whether it's working out, whether it's, I don't know, listening to like a history podcast or whatever, everything that they see is right-wing sentiment being expressed by individuals that they find charismatic. But you can only blame internet uh -huh. algorithms for so much for so long. This automatic assumption that any dissent from liberal mainstream thought could only be caused by manipulation or brainwashing from podcasters is honestly a cope in my opinion, and just an easy excuse for failing to reach anyone beyond your own subreddit. As if this all wasn't the result of like a stagnant neoliberal corpo hell world that created a vacuum that was just waiting to be filled with some kind any kind of populism the crazy thing is the democratic party did have a candidate who successfully spoke to the demographic that they are currently trying so hard to reach. His name was Bernie Sanders. And every time he did speak to that demographic or say he was concerned that the Democratic Party didn't do enough to speak to that demographic, he was called a sexist, a racist, he was backstabbed multiple times and cheated out of winning the Democratic primaries. His fans were called Bernie Bros and constantly <laughs> berated bros. as oh sexists and misogynists. His campaign was too white and too male. And this apparently was a top priority to remedy in future campaigns. Too we were white told and he too was male. Just like Interesting that now they want men and white men. <laughs> they remedied it so well that now they have to backpedal because they, they erased a bit too much. Nice.
like Trump and, quote, appeal to angry white men. Well, 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 who's trying to appeal to angry white men now, bitch? It's almost like Bernie's hyper-focus on working class issues, bread and butter issues, and populism was naturally attractive to men. No football or beer required. <sighs> <laughs> And you know what? Maybe this shift with young men has less to do with who's holding the football and more of what happens when the DNC oh spends all their time and energy trashing the little bit of populism in their movement. And if you ask me, handing conservatives a monopoly on anti-establishment rhetoric on a silver platter was probably their first mistake. They kind of gave up on that bread and butter New Deal stuff for identity politics. And if you deny this, you are either lying or coping. Oh, the physical manifestation America. of the left has gone from the vision of the blue collar union worker to a nagging scolding fat woman clown with showman. blue hair barging into everyone's spaces and culturally colonizing them change this change that i don't like this i don't like that it's just incredible for me to witness years of anti-male rhetoric finally come back to bite the left and democrats in the ass watching these chickens come home to roost has just <laughs> been both incredibly depressing and deliciously vindicating to me in a sick <laughs> way and I'm not sure if I should lend out a helping hand or Mufasa them off this fucking cliff. Some Democrats are nervous. <laughs> Mufasa them. <laughs> oh, in a way, it kind of is karma. <laughs> it kind of is karma. It's kind of like, mm. yeah, you'd think at one point people just got sick of uh, being shoved around. Yeah, you think patience and tolerance. Um, has a limit. The party was too late to realize the problem. These Democrats worry that the party has focused too much on courting women voters, LGBTQ voters, and culturally progressive voters, alienating too many men in the process. There's a recognition that we're losing sick men, and, tired and of the being things sick we're and tired. doing yep. around men haven't been working. I think a lot of it is a reaction to social pro <laughs> What we've been doing around men, what, blaming them even more? Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but like you already beat them into feeling so tired and so sick of everything and being depressed and being lonely and being sad that it's not gonna work if you're just gonna go like point at them and go like, you're gonna keep being lonely. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of resolved. Like, I I'm kind of okay with my lonely status at this point. I think I'm better off even. Bruh. What? Like, why is it so hard to look at it and notice? Why is it so hard to even just have conversations with regular people? Just go out and canvas regular folk, not in rich neighborhoods, just working class individuals. Just go to them, ask them how their life is, what their problems are, what they're struggling with. Get normal fucking answers out of people and then work on how to address that. Yeah, why is that so hard to act like normal people? Like, I feel like they forget the fact that they plan to lead the country and they have a duty to the people. The heck is this shaming and pointing fingers and changing people? You're supposed to do better for them, not to have them molded around doing better for you. Progressivism done the wrong way, says David Hogg. Young men, he says, feel like progressives look down on them for saying the wrong thing, even when it's a mistake. That's a comfort. <laughs> is enough to drive them away from the Democratic Party, even if they don't necessarily agree with Republicans. They would rather be around someone they don't agree with who doesn't judge them than somebody they do agree with who judges them constantly. Men aren't moving right because they are choosing fascism. They are moving right because the left made them the villains in their anime fan fiction. It's yep. not that they all like Trump, that they all hate you and no amount of camo hats is going to fix that but do yep. not get it twisted i do not in any way shape or form believe the gop is going to help men i don't think they're gonna help anyone except maybe israel do i think all of the left is some hyper woke fat lady wagging her finger in men's <laughs> faces like no fun allowed <laughs> no if i did i wouldn't call myself left wing i'm not a democrat i'm a registered independent but the democratic party is historically better on policy and despite their messaging even when it comes to helping men Healthcare, higher wages, paid family leave, labor protection, social security. Things Republicans have always fought against. 
And I think that's why this is extra frustrating to me. I don't say this with any love for the Republican Party. That's so weird, party. man. In fact, if anything, I say it with love for the Democratic Party. I f***ing hate them. But deep down, I wish they could be better. I'm doing this for your own good. <laughs> go sleep, go sleep, shh. Go to sleep. I love you. Go to sleep. <laughs> I just hope that whether Kamala <laughs> wins or loses, the party can take a step back and evaluate what they're doing wrong. Because I don't think the Democratic Party should be the party for the gays and women. Oh, I think the Democratic man. Party should be the party for everyone including angry white men. So in your opinion, what could the Democratic Party do to win back young men? Can they do anything? To Are them. they fucked? To me, it might oh, take fucked, decades of work honestly. to fix the culture, the yep. rot that infests the progressive ideology. It is going to take a lot of work to fix, but I think it's worth it, not just for the Democratic Party's sake, but just for society's sake. I don't sake. think if you they like wanna this video, do please it. Please consider donating to my Patreon, link down below. I don't think they wanna fix it, honestly. At the risk of sounding like an asshole, um, I think they won't look at it from a situation of realizing their own mistakes because that would mean actually self-reflecting and being able to realize what they're doing wrong and actually care about something but they don't like they don't care they just care about whether you're voting or not they care about your vote they don't care about you as a person and sure they'll get better at marketing and they'll get better at being able to kind of like persuade you and sway you and manipulate you but like why is it so hard to actually just see the people and see their struggles and focus on improving at least one thing but i don't think i don't think they have uh time to fix anything honestly not with the whole push of putting people on top. Not with the whole pointing fingers and blaming people for being sexist, for not supporting a woman. It's just like, with that type of mentality and that type of campaign, I'm sorry, but like, I'm not American, so it's not like I can vote. But like, I wouldn't vote for you. <laughs> I'd look at it and be like, bitch, please, what can you do for me? Oh, you have a vagina? Ah, oh, man. Oh, that was so sad. It really helps the channel out and I appreciate it so, so much. Also, thank you for 2 million subscribers. That's insane. <gasps> and I will see you guys what? with a new video. Hey, yo, let's go. Congrats on 2 million shoes. That was amazing. Too many, many more. Bye. If you made it to the end, of this video, leave a comment and a like because it really helps. Yeah.